Great. So we talked about the challenges we see with um, some companies just simply getting data into the search engine. Um, so then let's talk about what they do with that data now they've got it, which is really creating the rules. Um, and that's probably where we see really the most issues with, with a lot of our clients. They, they aren't seeing the results they or their customers expect to get out of search. And there's a lot of different reasons for that, but the ones we typically see the most are things like many times companies launch their site with just you know default settings and they don't really do any configuration specific to their business or customers. Um, sometimes that's just a cost issue, uh, but we also certainly see companies who just don't, didn't know or understand that there was more that needed to be done than just you know getting that data into the enterprise search engine and, and the, you know, expecting sort of the out-of-the-box configurations to drive the results that are needed. Um, another common challenge we see is with companies that have really large or complex catalogs. Um, simply getting the engine to return good result sets can be really tough when you have multiple product categories and departments and brands. Um, you, you know, you have to choose the right attributes to index in those cases, keep those to a minimum to avoid overly large result sets. Um, that can be really tough when you start getting into products that cross over into multiple departments or have broad merchandising categories like men's or women's, kids or youth. Um, the other challenge you run into there is brand names with words that could also be products or categories, and that can create some confusing results. So think things like KitchenAid or North Face, and pretty much anything with the word collection in the title can create um, can, can create some challenges. Um, and as we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, you know customers are used to searching for things in their own words, and to do that well requires a robust synonym list. Um, that's got to anticipate sort of what customers might search for, how they might phrase different types of products, etc. Um, classic example of that is the red dress problem. Um, there's some really telling results from a survey uh, that Bloomreach recently conducted where they had 500 uh, folks describe uh, a particular red dress and got 129 unique descriptions for just the color. <laughs> so, uh, you know, manually anticipating that kind of, of synonym, synonym data and breadth, even at a, you know, just taking a higher level based on some statistical analysis of common terms used, um, really is, 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 a, is tough and, and difficult to do in a manual fashion. Romo, maybe you can uh, talk a bit about how Bloomreach addresses some of these uh, some of these initial sort of configuration challenges. Yeah, so I want to take this opportunity to dive in into a, a very specific example of synonyms. So synonyms in general is a major uh, area where people try to reduce their search results go closer to what user actually are looking for and so on. And it, it's also a very complicated area to tackle. So instead of concentrating on the part where, where you, you're building, say, uh, search components for solar in order to handle multiple synonyms and so on, it's more efficient for business users to concentrate on how to get various kinds of synonyms and how to tackle various kinds of recall issues on their sites. So uh, as you can see on the slide, it's, it's like a dashboard which, which brings in the review part for data as well as delivery. So on the left hand side, you can see certain synonyms which are generated, the, the source that, where they, that they were generated based on, and on the right hand side, from the sync column, you can see how, whether they are delivered or not. Like there's a green uh, button. Um, this, is, this is a good sample, but this gives a business user an overview of what data is generated. and whether it is in sync or whether it is uh, live or not. So at Bloomreach, whenever a merchant integrates uh, certain data like synonyms as well as product attribution as well as uh, global trends is available out of the box. No effort in terms of integration is even required to get this data and it's available for review from day one. I think that's how we tackle this problem over here. Okay, so John and I talked a lot about what it takes, what are the different aspects of actually building a search system. Uh, but in this slide, I want to address the same problem in terms of hard numbers. Like, what is the time it actually takes if, if a person has to go out and build a search system, even after the fact that uh, certain search servers are available uh, off the shelf? So let's look at a few uh, facets uh, that are there to such a search system. So there is personalization, auto-suggest, there is relevance, which is a big problem in itself, and uh, there is production uh, maintenance and operations. So as you can see over here, uh, a relevant system would, would actually be implemented in increments. So it, it's not possible to really build a system which is full-fledged without going through the increments of relevance tuning. So there, there would be time and effort uh, 
actually allocated to every level that is uh, specified over here. So you would start off with a search server, which is pretty basic. Then you will add, say, uh, KPI auto-tuning on top of it and, uh, say, personalization on top of it and so on. Uh, the another key aspect that we forget when we are designing a search system, when we are using any system in, in general, is the production <coughs> uh, production management and the maintenance that comes with it. It's not only during the build phase, it's also during the ongoing phase, which we'll discuss later, but it's also a major effort. And uh, the, as you can see in the diagram, it's, it's a vertical which goes across all the areas mentioned over here. So as you can see, it's this uh, building of a system would take roughly around 5.5 years. Uh, in spite of the fact that a search server would be available to download like right now and wouldn't even take uh, a lot of time. 